In this module, we'll be covering installing Windows in host and compute environments. In server, host and compute <laughs> environments. It's a very, very much focused on in knowing how to install Windows Server for Windows Server 2016. This first module is really focused on how you would go about installing that platform. Now, there are several ways you can install Windows. You can install it in a host machine. You can install it in a virtual machine. You can even install it on the Nano server. Nano server is a, a great new server uh, feature that is even more compact than the core server that we're used to from prior operating systems. We'll talk about Nano server in this module. So what we want to be able to show you is exactly how we go about solving this. And on the screen, what we see is installing Windows Server, when we go into the portion of the exam that you need to prepare for, there are a number of terms that you need to be familiar with. Installing and upgrading and mitigating servers is really where you want to start. So things like determining the Windows Server 2016 installation requirements, what you need to do to install Windows Server 2016, whether or not you're going to use desired state configuration, and a number of other features that are available when you're installing an upgraded Windows right, Server. Including activating it, whether you're using a KMS, Active Directory activation, a MAC key, stuff like that. So we'll take a look at all that in this section. Now we have a number of different versions of Windows Server 2016, and we've listed them out here so that you're familiar with them. Starting from Windows Server 2016 Essentials, and moving on down to the Standard Edition. Now each one of these versions are there for a specific purpose. For example, the standard edition is designed just for the physical server environment with little to no virtualization. Now, if you're looking at Hyper-V, you might have a version of Hyper-V that's only there for hyper-virtualization. Uh, it acts as a standalone for the virtualization platform. Even, even with the standard edition where we put in there little to no virtualization, you can run Hyper-V on a standard edition, but you'd only uh, be licensed up to two VMs on standard edition. That's why I would say little to no virtualization. If you had a lot of virtualization, a lot of, a lot of VMs needed, you probably would want to go at the Hyper-V server. Now we also listed out the requirements for installing Windows Server 2016. We start off with the basic requirements, minimum requirements as they call it, and these are things that you need to know for the exam. Uh, the minimums, for example, of RAM might be 512 megabytes. This means that if I were going to install Windows Server 2016, Microsoft would only support, if you, if you had any issues, it would only support it once they knew that you were installing it based on the minimum requirements. If you called in and said, I am installing it on a 256 megabytes uh, RAM, they would say, well, you need to go ahead and change that. So all these features from making sure you have 32 gigs of hard drive space, uh, 64 bits of processor architecture, it has to be 64 bit architecture, as well as 1.4 gigs of right. processor speed of and, CPU. And then there's other things depending on the, the role of that server, right? You probably want to go to UFI, the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, um, as opposed to Legacy BIOS. You don't have to, but there's got a lot more security features available when you use UFI instead of Legacy BIOS. And you probably want a TPM chip if you're going to use any encryption or, again, some more of the security features available to the server that are just more secure with a TPM. They're, they're not part of the minimum requirements because they're not required to install. They're just required for more of the security features once it's installed. And some of the others that you'll also keep in mind is things like the VGA requirements, 1024 by 768, and making sure you have a keyboard and monitor available so that you can actually do the work. You'll also require internet, internet access most yep. of the time because you need to be able to download any updates and manage those settings once you've set up your Windows Server 2016 system. Exactly. Now, the installation requirements, when you're installing Windows Server 2016, there are a few things to consider. If you're going to do a clean install, whether you're going to do an up upgraded install or a migration install. A clean install means I'm wiping out the system and I'm going to start fresh with a blank system of Windows Server right. 2016. The upgrade is really I have an existing version. Whether yep, it's I have server, server, right, I have server 2012 R2, or I have server 2012 and I just want to put in the okay. disk and I want to run it as an upgrade where all my applications, any user settings, documents, they just remain intact during that upgrade as opposed to wiping it clean and starting fresh and re-adding everything. And lastly, the migration, where you're going from one system to another. Uh, if you have two different systems that are running Windows Server, one, well, one's running Windows Server 2012 or 2016, you can migrate those services over to the, to the next system. Also be aware of the OS selection. How do, you solution, how do you select which OS that you need to run and uh, whether or not you're going to use the desktop experience or just the 
the core uh, component of Windows Server 2016. By default, how does Windows Server 2016 yep. get installed? You know installed? what, let's, let's go ahead and look at this. You can see on my screen, I have a virtual machine on my screen, and I have the ISO uh, for Server 2016 already mounted here. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. It's going to try to Pixie Boot. And once it realizes that I am not Pixie Booting, it, it launches from the CD. And right away, it says I want to install in English, because I, I actually downloaded the English ISO. English United States. I click Next and Install Now, or if, if I have a current uh, Windows Server 2016, I can al always repair it. We're using this ISO as well, but I do want to install it. Now at this point, the first thing it's going to ask me for is a key. The key will let it know which version of Windows that I am actually installing. So I have a key here for my Data Center Edition. And what you'll notice is if I choose it, Down for now. It's going to know automatically that I want Data Center Edition. Now, the same thing is if I were to cancel out of this and then uh, use the standard edition, it would show that. And if I canceled out of it and then put no key in there at all, just click next, it would give me what you saw in the screenshot or a, little, a few minutes ago. It'll give me all four of those choices. Now you can see the choices are Server 2016 Data Center with nothing next to it and Server 2016 Data Center Desktop Experience. What that means is the default is core. So Server Core means it has no GUI. It used to be called in Server 2012 R2, we actually called this Server with GUI. So it has no graphical user interface. It's just the operating system and a big command prompt. And it, it's just a much smaller footprint and it can hold most of the roles. What, you, what it can't do is it doesn't show a GUI. So most of us will administer a Server Core using either PowerShell or command prompts, or we'll connect to uh, Computer Manager or, or DNS Manager or DHCP Manager from another console on a GUI machine. I'm going to go ahead and click the desktop experience, because that's my preference for right now, and click Next. And I'm not going to go through this whole install, because it's, you know, I want to read the license. I'm a speed reader. Next. And custom, if I want to do any kind of uh, partitioning of my disk before I go ahead and do this. I can add partitions, I can reformat my partitions, next, and I'm just going to minimize this while we go on with the module. Excellent. So I can see here that basically we've um, basically we've uh, looked at the different uh, options for installing Windows Server 2016. The data center, the standard edition, the essentials, the multi-point premium servers, these are all options for installing Server 2016. But don't forget about the storage server. Don't forget about the Hyper-V server. These right. are also options that are available. Yeah, it, it depends on which ISO file that you download. I downloaded one that, that has standard and data center in it. You can also download the Hyper-V server ISO from your volume licensing service center or from MSDN for testing. So again, it's not possible to go between the core and the GUI like you did with Windows Server 2012. Uh, so if you're in the exam room and you're looking to get that answer, just remember that you won't be able to move from core right, to Right, that, that's actually a great point because in 2008, 2008 R2, you couldn't go from core to GUI. And then 2012, they said, you know what? We're going to make it easy to go from core to GUI and GUI to core. And then in 2016, they removed that functionality because of some issues that our customers found when they went from core to GUI, GUI to core. It, it didn't make any sense to keep that functionality when all the, with the little issues that, were, that they were finding. So with the configuration of Windows Server 2016, be familiar with partitions, disk size. All of these things are requirements for setting up your Windows Server 2016. Now we'll go a little bit further. We dive into what is Nano Server. And Nano Server itself is what we consider a new, headless, 64-bit only deployment option for Windows Server 2016. Now, as we compare it to the other platforms, a server with a desktop experience has all the GUIs, it has all the applications that you need available for you to install as part of the image build, and it's there. So the server GUI core, the server core cuts down on those options. It makes it a little bit simplified so that you can just install yep. the server core without the management overhead. And then Nano Server brings that one step further. It's more compact than even server core is. It can only hold a few different roles, including Hyper-V, DNS. It can host um, a subset of the IIS features, but not all of them. It cannot be a domain controller. Uh, and, and you don't actually log into Nano Server. You would actually 
connect to it and do some remote management when you, do, when you want to manage it. You can see in the graphic that we have, server with a desktop experience has this many features and it has this much overhead. Server core is about, you know, 60% of that. And then nano is one-tenth of a desktop experience uh, build. So most of this was originated in the cloud. We'll see this more and more coming from the cloud from a nano perspective, and we'll talk about what that means. So installing and configuring nano servers, the next most important piece of this uh, portion of the module. So you'll be able to, you need to be able to determine the appropriate usage requirements for the nano server, as well as how to go about installing the nano server. On top of that, you'll need to also understand what managing nano servers yep. are and how you actually do it using, using Windows PowerShell. One thing I'd like to bring up here, and I'll bring it up again several times throughout this series, is things are moving really fast here in Redmond and with Microsoft Learning. And Microsoft Learning is doing its best to keep up with all the changes happening in Redmond. So right now, as of today, as we're filming this, Nano Server can actually be installed as the current branch, current branch for business model that Windows 10 follows, or as LTSB, long-term servicing branch, like Windows 10 follows. So Nano Server can be either LTSB, or CBCBB, current branch, current branch for business. The rest of the server operating systems for Server 2016, those are all LTSB only, whether it's core or GUI, uh, desktop experience, it's standard data center, Hyper-V server, uh, storage server, those are all only LTSB as of today. Again, things are changing fast. I don't know that that's roadmap, but things are changing fast. So we'll always keep track of the uh, TechNet pages for Server 2016 and the uh, Microsoft Learning page for this specific exam to see when the last time it was updated. So you talked about just the different options that are available for Nano Server. That's important to, to know what those options are. And are there any other limitations that we should know about Nano Servers? Uh, look, I don't know if it's a limitation, but you can install things like ASP.NET, which uh, is important to install for some applications that you have. Um, again, some limitations are uh, really, the management, some people will love Nano Server because it's such a small footprint, and some people will not love it because it's not as easy to manage because it has to be done remotely. Okay. Okay. And so the other piece that we could dive into is just how do you go about getting started with Nano Server? And we've listed some of those commands here so that you know what you need to do to install the Nano Server option. Now, you can't just install it from a CD. You actually have right. to extract it and grab those packages and place in a specific location where you can actually utilize it. And here we listed the nano server folders that, that have packages of sub, subfolders. Now each one of those are package files that can be used to install on a nano server itself. We can use something like DISM, uh, Deployment yep. Image and Service Management, a tool to add the package, we give the package path, and that becomes what gets installed in the device itself. And then you would use PowerShell add, uh, add role or feature and add the DNS package or add the IIS package after nano server has been installed. Again, you would do that uh, remotely into, with a remote PowerShell command, but that's how you would then make it a DNS server or an IIS server or a Hyper-V server. So again, for this exam, be sure to know what PowerShell is and how you can use it to manage those nano servers as well. The installing roles and features from the package repository. Oh, and there we are. Looks like I was, I was ahead of myself there. Yeah, you're now. right there, exactly. <laughs> nano servers, uh, like we mentioned, are roles that you can actually install those roles based on the server package. You can find them, you can save them. Again, you know, noun, uh, verb noun, yep. you know, find, nano server package, save, install. All of these things are things you should be uh, familiar with so that you can differentiate them in the exam questioning process. We also want to think about being able to convert the WIM to a VHD. I kind of walked you through uh, on a Windows 10 or Windows Server 2016, how to convert a WIM to a VHD. Now again, this is maybe a little bit more detail that you need for the exam, but knowing that you can actually convert it uh, from one format to another really gives you a heads up. Yeah, and it allows you to then launch Nano in your Hyper-V environment because it's a VHD file now. So we listed that command out here. And then the other thing you'll be able to see is the customization. So if I want to uh, you know, use the customizations to further uh, specialize the Nano server, you can actually do that. So things like the you know. static IP address, join the domain, change the administrator password, all these things, it's almost like an unattended, if you will, an attended answer file. Yep. And we just, again, you just show different, uh, the different options available in the screen grabs. So here are a few other options for remotely, remotely managing nano server from everything from the graphical web, the remote graphical web tools, PowerShell remoting, VM Container Management, which we use Hyper-V or Hyper-V Manager, and also other tools like PowerShell Direct, 
We also look at deployment and monitoring. So DISM can be used to build the images or even VHD support or uh, the, dam the de desired state configuration is also an option. Yep. ESCOM, so all of these things are integrated into Nano. So think, don't think of at Nano as a standalone solution. It really is something that's built into Windows Server 2016 and can be managed fairly uh, efficiently with the tools that we have listed here. The last one we had was partners and frameworks. So we have chief integration, we have a number of different solutions that are integrating the management of Nano servers as part of the core set of capabilities that can be provided I, on a Nano I think server. what's interesting in that part of that of that uh, list is Python and Ruby and Chef and all these things that you don't really think of to manage your servers, maybe you know Linux and things like that, but not your Windows servers. So it's interesting that those have been integrated in as well with Nano Server. And if we take a look at the server management tools, we'll see here that they're web-based and they include a number of replacements for local only tools. Now, again, this is a server management tool that we, you know, managing a server in the cloud or in Microsoft Azure. These tools are things that you can actually utilize because many of the VMs that we run are also configured to run in the cloud. You'll have these options available from the control panel all the way down to the file yep. explorer. Okay, and creating and man manage maintaining images for deployment. We have options to deploy using Windows Server Virtualization, Linux FreeBSD, as well as Sur Server Core. So know your options when you're creating those images and deploying them. In the planning for Windows Server Virtualization, here are some things that you need to think about. Yeah, so we've listed some things in the planning. If you were to take, uh, if any of the exam questions are about planning and you are planning your virtualization strategy using Server 2016, what you want to know is which of the servers will be virtualized. Will it be a domain controller? Will it be a web server, DNS server? So which ones will be virtualized? Are you going to be doing all of your servers, only new servers? Uh, again, what workloads will be on those servers? Again, is it which applications might be on those servers that are being virtualized? And do you need any backup or fault tolerance uh, with these with these VHDs? With also these determine what the network needs are for the guest yep. VMs, because if you have guest VMs, you want to make sure that they have access to the internet if they're required, and not just provision them as blank VMs exactly. without the network access. We also have to plan for virtualization. So using the MAP toolkit, the Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit, you can do things like identify operating systems, hardware, software, inventory, Hyper-V, yep. and VMware, all through the guest and the host itself. Yeah, and you can push this out to, uh, you can install this on any server, and it's agentless, so it sends a query to a list of servers or to an OU hosting all of your server 2012 R2 servers, and it will let you know what's running on those so that you can plan your virtualization strategy as you plan to upgrade them to server 2016, or go to P2V, uh, the physical server to a, a virtual running server 2016. Excellent, excellent. And then also planning for Linux and FreeBSD are also options that are available. Again, these are newer features of Windows Server 2016. What's supported, we list here that you can actually emulate uh, um, emulation and run both Linux and FreeBSD in the Hyper-V platform, yep. as well as it just offers just better performance. Right, altogether. and it's, it's nice that you can now put a Linux VM on your Server 2016 Hyper-V where previously you had to use third-party virtualization technologies, now you can put it on server, and, and as well as in Azure, but for this exam you just need to worry about server. Exactly, and we provided the link in there as well so that you can reference that information. We also talked about updating images based on patches, hot fixes, drivers, and roles. These are all different ways you can update the system at once the image has been pushed out and is being configured for further controls within the organization. We have sector-based image versus file-based image, we have basic, you know, basic strategies for updating images and, and you know, just when to use online servicing. It may be an option. Well, yep. And again, um, as I mentioned a little bit ago, right now we're, we're looking at an LTSB version of Server 2016. That's the, uh, the current model. All server operating systems except for Nano are LTSB only. Uh, with Nano, you actually have an opportunity to upgrade that using the current branch, current branch for business uh, servicing uh, style or method as like Windows 10 does, we just mentioned that. So keep that in mind as well, uh, that we're looking at security patches and, and critical patches, not necessarily feature upgrades like you would see with Windows 10 or with Nano. So let's go ahead and go through a practice question. You plan to install a server that runs Nano Server. You need to ensure that the server can run virtual machines. Which PowerShell command should you run? So the PowerShell commands that we list for you here are install Nano Server Package, Microsoft Nano DCB package, 
uh, nano server host package, guest package, or compute. Which one do you think that is? And, then, and if you know PowerShell, if you know nano server, as you start practicing into this, you can start eliminating some of these one at a time. It's probably not going to be a guest package, um, the way that this question is worded, so you can eliminate that one. And so I would look at each one of these as true, false. You know, is it A? Nope, that's false. Is it B? Nope, that's false. In this case, the answer is? Ta-da! It's D. It's a compute server. And we have put the list here as to basically where we got that information from to make sure that we were giving you accurate information on this practice test. And a few tips before we leave is in one, number one, tip number one, read up on nano server. If you haven't seen what nano server is, how it can be configured, make sure you understand how it works on the platform. Secondly, tip number two, manage the core. Make sure that you're using the tools that we mentioned, like PowerShell, Domain Join or Gjoin, DISM, you know, Windows Installation uh, Database, or any of those tools. WSUS might be yeah. another option. Make sure you're familiar with those terms as it relates to Nano. And thirdly, the server virtualization. Make sure you have an understanding of how you can use the Map Toolkit to access the needs and at, you know the, the resources that are available for users that are looking to migrate to Windows Server 2016. So hopefully with this first module, we've given you some insight into what's coming with Windows Server 2016 and you've, got a, you've had a chance to sort of build your own lab and start the testing along with us. Again, we want to thank you for joining us today and we'll see you on the next module.